Hello my friends, today we are going to edit this image into Luminar Neo. Right now we are in Lightroom and this is a focus stack image. I took four images, it's this one. Then I shifted focus more towards the back. So I have four images that I need to focus stack and I will do that in Photoshop before we edit the image into Luminar Neo. So right now, this is the raw images, as you can see over here. And if I go to develop, you will see it has zero edits. So this is straight from the camera. It's a little underexposed and such, but we will fix all of that into Neo. To take this into Photoshop to do a focus stack, I will click on the first image, click on the last one, and then I will go to photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Now, if you're new to Luminar Neo, I would like you to know that I have over a hundred tutorials on Luminar Neo on a playlist absolutely for free. You can go watch those and, you know, be up to speed with editing on Luminar Neo. So as you can see, Photoshop is opening all those four photos as layers. And in order to focus stack them, first we have to align them. To align them, click on the first layer, hold down shift, click on the last layer. And now with all four layers selected, we want to go into edit auto align layers. Keep it on auto and just click OK. And Photoshop will do its best to align these layers so then we can do a focus stack. And once we will do the focus stack, we will send it into Luminar Neo and do our edit there. Sometimes it's always good to align your layers because sometimes your tripod, even if you shoot on a tripod, the tripod could move a little bit. As you can see, I'm about to pixel off. so it's good to align them before you stack them. Now with all layers selected, I'll go back into edit and this time I will go to auto blend layers. Here I will keep it in stack images unless you're doing a panorama, but we're just stacking focus. So we'll keep on stack images and leave seamless tones and colors checked. Click OK. And now Photoshop will take all the sharp uh, pixels from each image and stack them together, create a sharp image from front to back. It takes a little bit just because I shot these images with my Sony 7R4, which is 61 megapixels, so they're pretty big files. As you can see, it created the mask and it selected every pixel that was in focus from each one of these layers, blend them together, and now we have one image that is sharp front to back. Now I need to flatten this layer, this image, so we work with only one layer. To do so, I will right click right here on the great side of one layer and just go to flatten image. And now we have a flattened image and to get rid of this uh, transparent pixel that we, you know, we have on the edge, I will go to crop and I will crop my image. Actually for this image, I think I like to get rid of some of this foreground because it's a little bit too much foreground and I think I will crop it on an 8 by 10 ratio. So I will edit something like that. Let's see. And that looks good to me. Click OK to accept the changes and this is the image we will be editing in Neo. I would like to duplicate my layer, Command J to duplicate it. Always work with a duplicate just in case something goes wrong, we still have the original image. Then I will go to Filter, Skyloom Software and go to Luminar Neo. Now in Luminar Neo we will start our edit from the top down. Under Develop I would like to increase the exposure because it is very underexposed. So something like that will look great. I will add a little bit of contrast. Um, I like the highlights the way they are. I'm going to bring the shadows down a little bit. And then the black and white points, I'll click J on my keyboard to bring back the warnings if I'm clipping. I'll start with the whites and move them to the right. And you see when red appears, that means you're clipping those whites. That means there is no information there. So I want to stop before I see any red. Same thing with the blacks, I'll move them to the left. I don't want to make it too dark. So maybe just something like that looks good. Next, I will move into color and I will increase the vibrance to maybe around 28. And that looks good to me. I think I am done with develop. I will close develop and next I will go to enhance and add some accent. Let's see. Don't want to go all the way to 100. Only looks very, you know, crunchy. So I'll keep it around 28. That looks good to me. The next uh, tool I would like to use is landscape and here I just add a little bit of golden hour to warm up things a little bit. Then we'll go into color and we'll work with the HSL. 
Now here I want to get a little bit more, you know, autumn colors into the image. So I will take the yellows into the oranges. I'll take the oranges into the red a little bit. And let's see. I think uh, the greens, I can either warm them up like this to make it everything kind of warm tones, or I can cool them. I think I will cool them just to get a little bit of contrast into the colors. Then I'll go to the saturations. The greens are super saturated now, so I will take it down a little bit, the saturation on the greens. But I do want to increase the yellows, the orange saturation, and the reds a little bit. So our image so far, let's see, we started with this and now we are here. This is the before, this is the after. I think we're doing great. Let's see, what else can we do? We can go to mood and we can add a lot. And for this one, I think I will go to, let's see, Palm Spring. Yes, that one looks great. You see how we brightened the image? So this is the before, this is the after, before and after. Just kind of brought it to life. And I like that a lot. Now by looking at the image, I see that there's a person over here with a blue jacket. If I zoom in at 100%, you will see what I'm talking about over here. And we can clone this person out, but I just want to show you something. I think there is a bug with the program because if I use the clone stamp tool, for me, it completely destroys my edits that I've done so far. So I'll just show you really quick. You know what, maybe I should do it on a new layer just in case this one gets messed up. So to duplicate the, this layer, I'll just click on the layer and click D. And this will duplicate the layer and we work on the duplicated layer just in case things are going south with this clone tool. I will show you what I mean by that. I'll go into the clone tool and let's see, I'll take a size about this big. I want to zoom in so I see what I'm doing. And I will take a source. To take a source for cloning, hold down option, click right here next to it. And then I will clone out the blue jacket. And as you can see, the program is struggling. It's a little bit, you know, buggy. Nothing happened. There you go, now it worked. So let's see if we can improve this clone a little bit better. There you go, that doesn't look bad. And now if I go back to fit to screen, you see how my image is just darkened. It's not the way it was before. And let's see if I hide this layer. You see my original layer was so much brighter and full of color. And now after I use the clone stamp tool, my image changed to this. So I don't think it's worth removing that person because it is, you know, messing with my whole edit that I did. So I'm going to delete that layer and we'll leave the person there for now. I can do that in Photoshop. Now, the last thing I like to do is to add a vignette here. So to do that, I will go into the vignette tool and I'll take the amount to negative 100. I will open the advanced settings and bring the size, let's see, something like that. I'll feather it to 100% and then I'll increase the amount to what it looks right for me. Maybe something like, maybe negative 30. And this would be my edit for this image. Let's see, we started with this and we ended up with this. This is the before, this is the after. Before and after. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.